It is part three of my Bocking development series. I don't have time to explain, just get in the car. We made the first map in the first video, the first and only map that we're going to see in this entire game. We made the gameplay loop by creating this event right here, and now we're going to edit the event script. And the reason that I made it just one event sheet is so I could copy that single event sheet and then go right into the next place. So we're going to convert this to an event, a custom event, and we're going to paste all the text, all of the event commands right here. And if you guessed the gameplay loop, uh, you get a cookie and I'm going to reveal the gameplay loop right now. You're just going to go from place to place. The town has no threats. The abandoned, the abandoned town, abandoned town has no threats. Uh, if you watch the previous video, this will make a lot more sense. This is, this is Hansfordville. Hansfordville. Naming them after my lovely patrons. They're hobgoblins. Hobgoblins here. Should I go in? There are hobgoblins here. They... They don't see me. Should I go in? Okay. Now, this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I enter the town. I arrive on Mike Street. I see a hobgoblin. Instead of I think I could beat it, the text here is going to be... It sneers at me. Should I try to fight it? Should I try to fight? Okay, when yes is selected, now we are going to be comparing the battle level. We're gonna do an additional check here. So, obviously you can say no at any time and back out of any particular battle. And the little bits of flavor text here will kind of provide for you a clue, as well as the type of monster that our hero says is in that town. So if you're familiar with RPGs and you just want to kind of take a guess at which order to go in, you can progressively fight monsters and get stronger and stronger by going and tackling the ones that sound like they're weak. Like you, you typically go from goblin to hobgoblin, but this is one of the ways that I'm going to actually subvert the expectation. When you come across the goblin camp, there's going to be a ton of them. So you're going to be one of, uh, you're going to want to be a lot stronger than, than you are at this point when you're attacking some hobgoblins. But anyways, we're going to be displaying a choice. And so conditional judgment and check variable box. And so if the variable box battle level is equal to or greater than one, which is what your battle level will be assigned when you beat the very first syrup slimes in pancake forest, then you will now win. Um, and if not, you will die. So if it's not, we're gonna go ahead and put that message in there now. I was too cocky. I was beaten. I guess I'm not a hero. And so that will actually end the game. We'll do a game over right here. Ooh, do I want a game over or do I want to exit the game? Just exit. I'll go back to the title. We'll go back to the title. We won't, we won't get too frustrating there. All right, so if we go back to the text mode, we're going to grab these last three event bits here. All, all, all these, please. Thank you. And we're going to cut them. And then we're going to go back to panels just so I can make absolutely sure where it is I'm pasting them. We'll do it right here. Whoops, that's not where we want them. Undo, undo. We want them right here. So that should work perfectly well. And we are adding a one to the battle level. So I beat the monsters. I beat them. I beat the monster. My battle level is now whatever that is. We'll go ahead and test play. I think that's what our next step should be. Okay, so we're gonna go and we're firstly, we're gonna test play this getting killed. Yes, go in. Mike Street, should I try to fight it? No. And then the uh, regular test, no, good. And now we're going to fight them. And then, yes. Beaten, beaten. It didn't game over us. It didn't game over us. That's okay. We're gonna go ahead and kick the slime's butts. The forest has no threats. Go to the town 
Mansfordville. Should I go in? Yes. Should I fight the Hobgoblin? Yes. Battle levels now too. Battle levels now too. The abandoned town has no threat. So we are basically going to copy and paste this event and make the minor adjustments to each one. Uh, I want to make sure the game over is actually gaming us over. Not sure why it wasn't there. I think I chose the wrong one to be honest with you. Yeah, we specifying the game over. What am I doing? Oh, exit game is the game over. I was thinking it would just close the entire thing out. No, that's not the case. So we're just returning to title screen, I guess. Uh, hit apply, okay. And then that should be the actual like game over that I want. However, I will confirm this by going to edit, whoops, 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 edit the event. And just go ahead and copy the entire thing yet again. All of it, highlight all of it. Could just highlight the topmost panel in the event panel, but I'm I'm wanting to work quickly, and I know that the doing the text mode will do it faster. So we're going to go here. Where should I go now? Here now. Here now. And we will convert this to an event, and we will do a custom event. Okay. Then we will just right click and paste. Right click and paste. Left click, right click, and then paste. Go to my panels. This is the monastery. And um, what we are doing here at the monastery. Call it a temple. The temple. This is this is Nutshell Temple. The lizard man is here. It's a lizard man. It's here I want to make a little bit of variation. Maybe with each battle I'll add two to your overall battle level going forward. And then some of these will actually be odd numbers so that you can tackle them in a slightly different order if you want, maybe. Or otherwise, I should try to uh, put a little bit of hint in the flavor text. If I can beat hobgoblins, if I can beat hobgoblins, this guy should be easy. There we go. That's what I'll do. Uh, I enter, I enter the temple. I see, a, I see, I see the lizard man. It sneers at me, should I try to fight? That's fine, that's fine, we can reuse that. So now, if your battle level is equal to or greater than two, then it will actually add two to your battle level. And that's all we need to do because all of the other flavor elements of that are pretty well solidified. So that's our third one done. We will just do a test play really quick. Uh, we should have a solid game over happening. I need to edit the uh, title and as well as this map stuff here. Uh, yes, I enter the temple. Should I try to fight? Yes. And then boom, <laughs> lovely. Awesome, goes right back to the title screen. Uh, did I actually talk to this? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well done. So that's it. That's the basically the gameplay loop. I think if I want to make a couple of surprises in this map, I can do that. But I'm going to do it after I get all of these different little levels um, adjusted to where there's a monster and the same event plays out and there's this progressive order. Uh, and I think that I'll mix it up a little bit. I might go ahead and mix it up right here in the video. Let's, we'll just do it like an extra long video, just a few minutes longer this time, just so I can show you how I'm going to mix it up. Next, we're gonna go to the town. So, uh, we'll go ahead and make this a, an event, and we'll make it a custom event, and we're just gonna go ahead and right away, the message is gonna be, this is, uh, what, what will we call this place? What will we call this place? This is Justinville. The mayor is Sarah. There we go. There's my tribute to Justin and Sarah. Whoops, we don't want conversation though. We don't want conversation. We just want message. We just want message. If I beat the lizard man, I can get, I can get what? I can get, I can get steel sword. There we go. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and check to see. So conditional judgment. And then we're checking the variable box, of course. We're checking battle level global if it is equal to or greater than four, which it will be if you beat the lizard man, equal to 
or greater than four, because it'll be two from beating the hobgoblins, then it'll be an additional two for beating the lizard man. Then you your battle level will increase. So your battle level changing where am I? Why am I why am I scatterbraining? Let's do this. Battle level value add add three to that, I think. And then, uh, well, we could we could just add one. Actually, there's no need to go crazy about it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do that. And then, message, which I forgot, I can just paste. And excellent. My battle. Well, I need to actually, I need to actually recognize that we beat the lizard man and got the sword. Since I beat the lizard man terrorizing the temple I got the sword as a gift sword of stumpy obtained there we go little tribute little tribute we're not actually gonna give the player uh, well I guess we could do that why not we could do we could make the item and actually make a sort of stumpy item, put it in their inventory. But for now, it's just a text adventure, so I won't worry about doing that until we get to the end of the whole the whole vlog, um, the whole video game development itself. When it's all said and done, I might put the sword in there. So it's a maybe, but for now, we are going to increase your battle level. Uh, we added one to it, now we just need to recognize. Uh, we could do that actually in this exact same box. So my battle level is now, and then that needs to be a capital B. Stylization is important. Stay consistent. Go to display the value of a variable. Variable name it is the battle level. Whoops, that did not turn out right. So we're just going to grab that, cut it out, control X, control V, exclamation point. That is good enough for me. Right here, we'll put some, some uh, message but I didn't beat the lizard man. We're not gonna game over yet. Yet? We won't game over. We won't game over for that. Let's test play and see how we did. Test play and see how we did. New game. We've tested every single bit of this map. Let's just run straight to the town and see what we get. Justin Vildemir, Sarah, if I beat the lizard man, I can get steel sword, but I didn't beat the lizard man. Awesome. I uh, need to change the, the sword name to Sword of Stumpy. And... Oh God, no, don't, don't do that. We got to go to pancakes, pancakes. Yes. And actually I need to start saving my game because after these successful playtest bits, there's no reason to start over. So done that, done that. We can test the lizard now and we're just going to say, uh, no, that worked out just great. Should I go in? Yes. And should I try to fight? No. All right. I think I can stop testing those functions since I'm copying and pasting them. They're going to work every single time. And my battle level is now four. And then go here. And battle level is now five. That is amazing. All right. It's working. It's working. And the feeling right now that I have is that I have a project in progress actually getting done. You can have the same feeling if you're more of a map decorator type, if you like just placing things down on a map and making your maps as detailed and as nice as possible. But if you are really just wanting to get into a project that needs to be done for a jam or what have you, and, and I mean, map decoration is a great way to do that too. Just so you can have a beautiful map for your players to explore. That can literally be the experience if it's for a jam, it's fine. Uh, at least for one of my jams. I don't know about those other pretentious judgmental hosts, but I appreciate all of the experiences submitted to my jams. But anyways, if you're just wanting to get into something and make a project, this is how you can do it. I've spent a total of 40 minutes now on this project altogether before editing and everything. This is my third video and I'm, I'm counting the previous two videos. I'm at the 44, 45 minute mark now. And this is what I've managed to throw together. So if I can do this in about 40 minutes, even with my privileged bit of experience with the engine, you can still take what I've done here and extrapolate it and at least get something comparative done because like even though it's taken me about 45 minutes to do this at my skill level you could do it faster or you could even like 
completely not even do all of the extra bits of this map that I've put down and still get to the point where I'm at functionally. So in as much or less time. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Try this game out for yourself. It'll be available, I'm sure, by the time you see this video. I'll have submitted it to the jam so I can try to inspire other people to act and make games. Uh, tell me what you thought about it, and I will see you in the next episode. That's the end of this devlog series, I think. I might make more just post-mortem stuff, and then you can see how I went about making the rest of the game, even though it will no longer be before the jam end. But anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'll do that, and then you can enjoy it. At, anyway, to see uh, how I did it. Maybe get inspired, maybe learn. Yeah. All over the place with this outro. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.